Yo, what is going on, guys? This is Airborne 92 here. I'm here with who? Logan Shepard. And what did you do at the Vegas, oh, YCS Vegas? Uh, me and my team got top 16 with Vikings Neck Eye. Hey, let's get started. Oh, oh, wait, before you get started, do you want to give any shout outs? Yeah, uh, shout outs to my uh, teammates, Taj and Dan. They were great all weekend. Uh, shout out to my sponsor, Card Shark. Uh, shout out to Tom's Crab Shack, Sergio, Thomas, Eric, and um, yeah, that's about it. All right, let's get started. Uh, so we played minimalistic Fire King package. Um, there's two care and one of the other ones. One island, one sanctuary. Uh, we didn't really need another target to search off Ponix uh, because it was usually just overkill. Uh, I cut this down to two just because you didn't want to see it in your opening hand as opposed to like a hand trap or a starter. And um, we would side this down to one going second because it just wasn't the uh, greatest. Then we played uh, three witch, three wanted. Uh, we wanted to maximize our chance of seeing this card because this plus Snake Eye Ash or Bonfire plays through Nib really well, plays through any hand trap and it's still full combo, and it's just more starters. We played as just a, another random push, a one for one, and we played the three Bonfire. Um, this either gets you Ash and gets you into your standard line, or it gets you Populous as an extender. Uh, both were just really solid. Uh, we played Three Ash, two Poplar, one Oak, one Flame Bridge for the Snake Eye cards. Um, you just obviously always want to draw this. And we decided on two because if you see one of these and then you don't have another search off the Bonfire or Snake Eye Ash, it's like really bad. This isn't even very bad to see because you know you pay this Witch or something and you still play through a hand trap. So it was solid. And then we played obviously just the one of original and we played the one of Temple which I guess is like slightly a newer addition. This is just another target off Poplar, and you use it before you commit into your Fire King plays to play around Appalooza or Droll. Um, it was just really strong all day. And for non-engine, we went with more of a hand trap approach. Uh, we played three Ash, uh, we played three Valor, three Imperm, and three Nib. Uh, we just thought hand traps were the best approach to this format uh, because even if you break your opponent's board with like Spally or something like that, they just have a lot of follow up and if you can't kill them, you lose. This punishes them if they have like a weaker like engine hand and um, it just like makes the game more simplistic. And then the last three cards we played were three talents. Uh, we expected pretty much everybody to also be on hand traps, so this was just a really great punish. Uh, going first and then going second, and either baits an Omni against the pure Snake Eye deck, or you take Appaloosa or Arvada in the mirror, and it's really strong. What do you do? And is this 40 cards? Uh, 41 cards. 41. Both my teammates played 42 and added an extra Kieran, but I just didn't really think it was necessary. Were you changing anything about the main deck at all? Honestly, not really. The main deck was super solid all day. Uh, for the extra deck, uh, for Link Tubes, we played SP, Sunlight Wolf, Hita, Dark. Uh, these are just really standard. The Charmers make your deck infinitely better going second. Uh, you would make this most of the times going first. Either add back a Flame Bridge to pop off Arvada, Oak for follow up, all that. And this just comes up in random spots where you need spot removal. Uh, for the Link 3s, we played. Two Princess. We played two because uh, during your standard Snake Eye Ash line, if you get Nibiru, uh, when you summon the first one and you don't have the second one, you get really punished and you can't set up uh, your Flame Bridge play for the next turn. Uh, so we just thought that was safe and correct. We played the one Heat Soul. We made this a lot going first, just generate advantage. And you could theoretically bring it back off of uh, Amber Whale if you left that on the board. So it's really strong. Uh, for the rank fours, we played uh, Zelantis and Raging Phoenix for the OTK combo. Uh, this was really strong when it came up. Uh, played the one Amblo Whale. Uh, this is usually just you uh, make this after Princess because you're fire locked. Uh, but it's really strong to end on when you have a minimalist board and you just need to pass. You make this when you're playing around Cosmic and you're worried about them popping your board. Uh, Appalooza. Uh, we get into this uh, with the Snake Eye cards. Uh, it's, it's played against the mirror and other hand traps. And going second it allows us to OTK through Nib. Uh, then we also played the one Underworld Goddess. This was so that uh, when we made the uh, IP and we you know, uh, got talents and it got taken, we could chain IP and just still link off with RIP for this. Um, it's also theoretically a noir out if you play Pearly, which we did one time. And uh, it makes your IP still strong if you burn the SP earlier in the turn. Uh, and then, forgot these, but we also played Link Rebo 
called Nightmare Phoenix and IP. This is just a standard edition of most of the end boards. Linking off Flame Burge on their turn and getting plus is really strong. Uh, you just need this for dark plays and to link off Poplar. And this is both really good in both outing back row, and if your opponent doesn't have any bodies, you can still kill with Zelantis by making this, and then popping it, and that triggers the Raging Phoenix. And then finally for the side deck, we played three Droplet. Uh, this was for the mainly pure Snake Eye deck because we wanted a card that dealt with the Baron and the Savage. Um, you know, that deck leaves a lot more of their interruptions on the board as opposed to in the graveyard, so we felt like it's a really strong breaker. So I had three Cosmic. These win almost every time because a lot of people were on Summon Limit this weekend. And also against the Pure Fire King deck, hitting Island sometimes just like wipes out some of their interruptions. Uh, then we played, I played two cross out. My teammates played Bell here. Uh, but I just felt like going first and going second, hitting the hand traps uh, was like really essential. And I was player B, so I played a lot more meta than you know my teammates. They played a little more rogue. Uh, then we played three summon limit as a going first card. Um, this was really strong. Even if you got full stopped, you could use this full stop them unless they hard open the cosmic, and then send it off with Ash or Witch, and then you know kill them from there. And then we finally played. Uh, three dogwood. This is both for time and um, just going second uh, with like you know 15 minutes left. You put them on either pass and then it's basically a max C, or you gain like 20,000 life points. It's almost impossible to lose. And then we played this card because it can uh, gain attack or something. It, it never came up. Honestly, I didn't uh, put any of these in the entire weekend because uh, I was just like winning before time most of the time. Dang. Okay. Okay. Um, but yeah, what you say? Congrats on winning top 16. And will we see you at any other events coming up? Definitely. Uh, I'm planning on a Raleigh and a couple others. Yeah, heck yeah. And if you guys see him, tell him say hi and uh, thank you for the deck profile and see you next time. Sorry for my two, sign down. Peace.